Mercator, how to set up and play. The first thing you'll do is sort and shuffle the contract cards based on their value and then deal each player randomly a two, three, four, and five contract card. Once all players have their starting contract cards, you can flip over the individual stacks of contract cards. The level two contract cards are only used for setup. Next, take the bonus cards and sort them into two stacks, the value three stacks and the value four stack. Shuffle them and deal each player a random card from the three stack and a random card from the four stack. Once all players have their starting two random bonus cards, you can shuffle the entire stack together and randomly deal out four to the display. Next, shuffle the entire stack of building cards and randomly deal out four to the display. These represent end game victory points. Next, you'll shuffle all the time tokens and put them on the time chart based on the number of players. So since I'm setting this up for a two player game, I filled up to this row. If I was playing the long version of a two player game or a three player game, you'd fill up to this row, and if you were playing a full four-player game, you'd fill all the way to the top. Next, you'll lay out the game board and create the supply of goods cubes, and then you'll put the indicated cube on each of the major locations. Each good cube in the game is used to represent one of two different types of goods. So, for example, the purple cube could represent ham or fish oil while the yellow cube can represent grain or saltpeter. Each player will start with one goods cube on their storage board. These can be used throughout the game at any time and the player can decide when taking the cube what type of resource it will be. So the player could decide that the orange cube can be used as vegetable or calf skin but goods on this supply tile can only be used once throughout the game and they would never refill. The player's board is used to store the different types of goods. You'll see each of the columns have an associated letter with them that come into play potentially when time tokens get revealed at the end of a row. And you'll notice that the first four have storage while the last two are called depots. That's only important because some of the building cards reference storage versus depots. The final part of setup is to randomly determine a start player. Give them the Mercator marker. They're going to start with no time tokens. The last place player, play will proceed clockwise. The last player will get two time tokens and every player in between would get one time token. Since I'm setting this up for a two player game, the first player would get none, and the second player, which is the last player, would start with two time tokens. Each player's turn will happen in four phases, the invest phase, the travel phase, the fulfill contracts phase, and the accompany phase. During the invest phase, the player is allowed to sell one or more of their contracts by simply discarding it out of the game and earning the money indicated on the contract. So this player may decide I'm going to sell this contract and this contract and earn nine money immediately from the bank. And these contracts would simply be removed from their board and discarded from the game. The player is never allowed to sell their last contract. And if they start their turn with more than five contracts, they are required to discard and sell down to a maximum of five. Also during the invest phase, players can use any of their available money to buy bonus cards or building cards. The required cost is indicated on the lower left on both types of cards. They can buy as many as they desire. If a card was purchased, Another card would immediately get flipped over, 
and the player is able to see it and also purchase the card that was just flipped over if they desire so and they have the remaining money. The cost of any purchased card is simply just returned to the bank. The bonus cards are going to provide goods bonuses during the travel phase, whereas the building cards are going to provide end of game victory points. Finally, at the end of the invest phase, players are not allowed to save more than 15 money. So if they end the invest phase on their turn with more than 15, they'd have to discard down to 15 maximum. The next phase of the player's turn is the travel phase. Basically, they're going to take the Mercator token at the start of the game, it's in their hand, and all other turns it's going to be already on the board, and they can place it anywhere they like on the board. And if this was a subsequent player's turn, they could even say to say, I'm going to leave it in England and travel to England, even if the Mercator token started their turn there. The first thing that happens is the player will take all the goods cubes that are currently on the space. If there's only one, they'll get to decide whether it's the fabric or the coal in the example of gray and place it on their player board. If there were two tokens, they'd have to put one on each of the goods. And if it was two or more, they'd have to put one on each and then the remaining goods, they could decide where to put them. They could split them evenly or they could put them all on one. So let's say there were 10 goods on a spot. As long as they put one on each of the two goods, they can decide what to do with the remaining eight. Then the player would check to see if they have any goods bonuses from their bonus cards, which they do. So whenever this player visits England, they get two wine. So they're not given the choice here. The two cubes come from the supply and they have to be placed into their wine spot. The next thing you do is refill goods based on the location where the token was placed. So in England, you can see it's connected to the Dutch Republic, it's connected to France, and it's connected with this rope to Spain. So each of these locations would get an additional cube. There are also four minor locations that you'll see are not connected by rope. When a player comes here and places the Mercator token, all spots with zero or more cubes would get an extra cube placed on them. So basically all of the major locations would get a cube. When Italy is traveled to, all of the major locations with one or more cubes would get an additional cube. When you travel to Denmark, all the locations with two or more cubes would get one additional cube. And when you travel to Bohemia, all the major locations with at least three or more cubes would get an additional cube. The final step of travel is time management, where you could possibly pay or receive time tokens. You can see coming to England did not require any time tokens whereas coming to Newfoundland required three time tokens. So if the active player did not have the time tokens in their supply, they could not even come to this location. Some locations, instead of costing time tokens, actually provide time tokens. So if the player came here, uh, at the end of the process, they would actually get two time tokens. These tokens come from the time track board. So the player would take these and add them to their personal supply. Whenever the last time token on a row is taken, you simply reveal it, and then all players have to discard one good from that column on their player board. So all players would look to the indicated column, and they could select just one of the goods to discard. If they didn't have any, there's no penalty. If instead of showing just one letter, the time token showed two letters, then all players would have to discard two goods from that column. After traveling, the next phase on a player's turn is they're able to fulfill any contracts that they have 
based on the location that they selected to travel to. So in this example, this player traveled to England, so any England contracts that they have could be potentially fulfilled now. To fulfill a contract, you simply discard from your player board the indicated number of goods. So to fulfill this contract, it requires one calf skin. The player doesn't have any, but they're going to use their one-time bonus with this orange cube to turn it into a calf skin, which fulfills this contract. So this cube just simply gets returned to the supply, and this contract has been fulfilled. Now the contract will stay with the player. The benefit of fulfilling the contract is they get to take the next level higher contract from the display. So since this was a level three contract, they are going to go to the next higher up, level four, and they get the top one from the stack and they add it to their board. You can fulfill as many contracts as possible for the location that you're in, but each individual contract could only be fulfilled once. So even if this player had multiple calf skins, once they've fulfilled that specific contract on this turn, they can't fulfill it again. If they had other England contracts, they could immediately fulfill those also. Even if the one that was just drawn by fulfilling this one happened to be an England contract and they had the goods requirement, they could also immediately fulfill this if it was possible. But it would have to match the location that they were in and obviously they would have to have the required goods. You may also have a situation where you fulfill so many contracts that now you're collecting contracts outside of the maximum five. That's okay. It's not until the start of your next turn during the invest phase that you're required to sell down to five total contracts. Another rule whenever fulfilling contracts, you always have the ability to trade four of one type of good for one of any other. You can also trade four time tokens for a good of any type. After the player has completed fulfilling and potentially getting new contracts, the final phase of the player's turn is the accompany phase. Going in turn order, clockwise, from the active player, each player gets the chance to accompany them and also visit their location. So that's the time symbol on the right half of this. So to accompany the active player to England, it's going to cost one time token. And that time token is played, paid directly to the active player. It's not paid to the supply. It comes to the active player. So going in clockwise turn order, each player gets the option to pay the time token if they desire and accompany to England. This would allow them, if they had any bonus cards for England, this player doesn't, that's where you get the cube on the lower half of the card with the accompany symbol. So the player could earn that. And by also accompanying, if they had any England contracts in this example, it's wherever the current location is, they can now potentially fulfill those contracts following the same rules and get the benefit of the next higher level. Once all players have had the option to accompany and that gets completed, that ends the player turn and now we go clockwise to the next player's turn and we start the phases over for that player. The end of the game can be triggered in one of two ways. The first way is if a player fulfills a level 10 contract and they get the next hire, they get the single piece of Westphalia card and add that to their board. That will trigger the end of the game. Or if a player takes the last time token on the time track. If additional time tokens need to be taken uh, by the active player or subsequent players, they just come from the supply and you still also do the loss of goods check when this is taken. Once the end of the game is triggered, you'd finish that player's turn, and now you're gonna complete one final round where every other player will get one last turn ending on the player's turn that, end, that triggered the end of the game. So if this player, during this player's turn, it triggers the end of the game, then all other players would get one last turn, ending with this player. For just that final round, the rule 
of the forced investment having to sell down to five at the start of your turn is not enforced. So you can actually let your contract cards stay over the five limit just for that final round turn. Once that final round is complete, you're ready for end game scoring. So for end game scoring, up to five of your contracts on your board will receive their full victory points. That's the number here. So add those together. So make sure you put your five most valuable cards. Any contracts that are outside of the board or outside of your top five most valuable will earn half their victory points and you're going to use half victory points. There's no rounding. Next, all players will score victory points coming from their building cards based on how they meet the requirements of the card. There's no four to one trade of goods allowed at the end of the game. So however your board state ends will determine the conditions met on the building cards. And finally, your bonus cards and any remaining money have no value at the end of the game. Tally all victory points and the player with the most is the winner. If there's a tie, the player with the most time counters will break the tie. And that should be everything you need to set up and play Mercator.